Hi, I'm Darren and welcome to New Factory Classics. Today we're going to break down Batman Begins. A young Bruce Wayne and his cleaning lady's daughter are playing on the vast Wayne estate. He eventually falls down a well and gets bitten by a bunch of bats. So Bruce Wayne starts out the movie having rabies. Adult Bruce Wayne wakes up from his nightmare in a prison. You gotta figure an American billionaire has to be worth at least two packs of cigarettes. Bruce gets into a giant fight and beats up about six men. He gets thrown into solitary confinement and ends up meeting a man named Ducard, the assistant to the leader of the League of Shadows. An organization known for being vigilantes and their hatred of the sun. In order to join the League though, Bruce is sent on a fetch quest to climb a mountain and find a special flower, and then to climb another mountain and then they'll let him join their club. After a brutal climb up both mountains, Bruce finally makes it to the club headquarters and then they immediately beat his ass. Bruce passes out again in dreams of when he was a kid and his father pulled him out from that well. Luckily, he only broke his arm because if he had broken his leg, he would have had to walk with a cane. Bruce's family is riding a train to the opera. It turns out that his father built the train for the city of Gotham. He tells Bruce that it's a billionaire's number one job to provide for the less fortunate. Truly the most unrealistic thing said in this entire series. The opera has a scene with bats in it and it scares little Bruce, which kind of makes sense. He was only bitten by bats a few days ago. His family decides to do what normal billionaires do and lead through the side exit of the opera and go into a dark alley. The family is robbed by the clumsiest robber of all time. He drops his gun multiple times and ends up shooting both of Bruce's parents. While Bruce is not hurt at all, one thing is definitely true. Don't take your kids to the opera or they'll try and have you murdered. And so young Bruce Wayne is left to live in a giant mansion being raised by Alfred, his butler. He ends up growing very angry towards the criminals of Gotham City, wanting to get his revenge while still only being 12 years old. I'm sure this will not affect how he is as an adult. Just kidding, he's going to join the League of Shadows, somehow a group of guys that gets less tail than League of Legends players. There's a montage of Ducard training adult Bruce in the ways of being a ninja. And of course throughout he's constantly kicking Bruce's ass. Why are you doing this Bruce? You could be a billionaire playboy in Gotham. Flashback to when Bruce returned home from college and seeing Rachel for the first time since they were kids. He's angry at Rachel because she's an assistant DA and her boss is about to let the guy that murdered his parents out of jail. That man though has information on Falcone, a local criminal drug lord. Bruce will get his own revenge and he walks up with a gun prepared to kill the man who killed his parents. Unfortunately, that rat is shot by one of Falcone's men. As it turns out, snitches get stitches, or in this case, one to the heart. Rachel gives Bruce a ride home. She shows him how the city is dying without the help of the Wayne Enterprises funds. People like Falcone are sucking up the lifeblood of the city and killing anyone in it. Bruce says Falcone did him a favor as he had a gun with him and was planning on killing the man also. She gets angry at him for having revenge on his mind and actually considering killing someone. She throws him out of her car. Oh, I'm sorry, Rachel. We don't all still have our parents and also we can't all live up to the standards of our maid's daughter. Bruce walks into Falcone's bar and ends up confronting the criminal overlord. He ends up being called a rich billionaire crybaby and gets the crap beat out of him. It turns out Bruce is going to need more than a billion dollars and just going to college in order to help him stop these criminals. So he decides to become homeless and ends up fleeing Gotham, traveling the world as a homeless criminal just as his parents would have hoped for. Now it's time for Bruce's final test to become a ninja in the League of Shadows. They grind up that blue flower that he brought to their criminal hideout and it ends up making him hallucinate and see all of his worst fears. Then he must find Ducard who is hiding within a bunch of ninjas. Most criminal organizations find recruits based upon hide and seek rules. For his next test, Bruce must execute a local criminal who stole and killed his neighbor. Bruce refuses to kill the criminal because he doesn't want to kill at all. Which sucks for the League of Shadows because their next target is to bring down the city of Gotham and he would have made a great general as someone who used to live there. He still refuses to kill the criminal and ends up starting a fire, which is generally frowned upon in the interview process. Bruce and the League of Shadows leader Ra's al Ghul end up fighting, but Ra's is killed in the fire. 
He ends up saving the life of an unconscious Ducard and drops him off with a local Sherpa. Bruce ends up calling Alfred to fly his personal jet to Bhutan. This vacation has sucked. It's time to go back to Gotham. Well, Rachel has been busy fighting her own battles while Bruce was off gallivanting around the world. It seems that the DA's office has been losing a lot of cases lately. Dr. Crane of Arkham Asylum keeps saying that every single one of the people that they're trying to prosecute is crazy. Well, at the bare minimum, at least they'll be locked up in Arkham Asylum, locked up and secure where they'll never get out. Bruce finds an underground cave under Wayne Manor, a cave of bats, a bat cave, if you will. Though it's underground, full of water, and very slippery, an absolute horrible place to put a giant supercomputer and a helipad. Bruce finds out that Earl, the CEO of Wayne Enterprises, is taking the company public. But he can't be that mad. He ran away from his business like seven years ago and hasn't been heard of by anyone. Bruce goes to work for Lucius Fox, the head of R&D for Wayne Enterprises. It turns out Lucius worked with Bruce's father and designed the train system, the electrical system, and the water system for all of Gotham. It's best to line everything up. That way it's easy to work on and easy for a terrorist to attack it should anything go wrong. Fox gives Bruce some battle armor, a utility belt, and a few other things for, let's call it spelunking. Officer Gordon is a beat cop, but he may be the only clean cop on the force. Bruce wants to work with Gordon because he needs somebody to actually arrest the men that he takes down. When escaping his first meeting with Gordon, he ends up jumping from roof to roof but ends up falling and hurting himself. It looks like he'll need more toys from Lucius. He needs a cape that'll help him glide and some sort of tank that he'll make into the Batmobile. Of course, this tank is a one-of-a-kind replica, so it's going to be easy to figure out who is driving the machine. Bruce goes to the docks. It turns out that drugs are being funneled into Gotham there. There's the normal set of drugs and a super secret second set of drugs that are going to the Narrows. It's time for Bruce to put an end to all the drug dealing in Gotham. If people want drugs, they should get it legally from Wayne Enterprises. The Batman takes out about 12 of Falcone's men and even gets the mob boss himself as a bonus. He also saves Rachel from a hit. It turns out that Falcone put a hit on her that night, but he wasn't able to kill her because the Batman was able to stop the two murderers. Batman asks Rachel to prosecute the criminals that he is catching. She can finally work with someone that's actually going to help her bring down the criminal organization. It looks like Bruce's first night as the Batman was incredibly successful. Yet Rachel is still not coming home with you, Bruce. She doesn't like you that way. All the money and being a hero in the world can't win her away from this guy. Bruce wakes up with a bunch of bruises all over him, so Alfred says he needs to explain what he's doing with his time as a rich billionaire playboy. So he ends up taking a bunch of Russian models out and they end up playing in the fountain at a local restaurant. Of course, Rachel shows up and she sees her childhood friend acting a fool. Bruce tries to come clean and say how he really does want to be a better person, but she won't hear it. But frankly, it doesn't matter. You can't win her away from this guy. It turns out that one of the weapons that Wayne Enterprises makes is missing. It's a water vaporization gun, which I'm pretty sure is against the Geneva Convention. While in jail, Falcone threatens Dr. Crane that if he doesn't let him out, he'll reveal all of Crane's plan. Unfortunately for him, he's not just Dr. Crane, he's also the Scarecrow, and ends up shooting Falcone in the face with fear toxin, driving Falcone actually insane. An absolutely devastating waste of Falcone's one call after he was arrested. After kindly asking Gordon's assistant where the second set of drugs are going to, he finds out that they're going to the Narrows, the poorest area of Gotham. He ends up running into a little boy who's actually from Game of Thrones, and he will become king, though not remembered kindly for his reign. Bruce finds a shipment of fear toxin in an abandoned apartment, but eventually gets attacked by Scarecrow, losing his mind and going crazy himself. He ends up falling out of a window after being set on fire. It looks like his second day of Batman is not going as well. Bruce ends up calling Alfred for a pickup. He's losing his mind, but luckily he had a butler to come and get him. As long as everyone has a personal butler, the fear toxin shouldn't be that bad. Bruce wakes up two days later. Luckily, Alfred called Lucius and had him make an antidote for the fear toxin. Bruce asks Lucius to make a lot, lot more because they're about to need it. For now, though, Bruce has to follow Rachel. She's on her way to the Narrows to argue with Dr. Crane because he keeps arresting and convicting everyone as they are criminally insane. 
and I couldn't think of a better place for her to go alone, Arkham Asylum, where every single person she's attempted to convict is waiting for her, a whole bunch of criminals and murderers that all want her dead. Dr. Crane takes Rachel on a walk through Arkham and ends up showing her his master plan. He's pouring all those secret drugs into the water supply for the Narrows and Greater Gotham. He ends up spraying Rachel with a lethal dose of fear toxin. Why did he not shoot Batman the night before with a lethal dose of fear toxin? Rachel is fading out quickly. If she doesn't get an antidote soon, she will die. And you know what they say about her? She doesn't want to wait for her life to be over. Batman swoops in and fights a bunch of the goons that were working for Crane and eventually sprays Crane in his own face with a bunch of the fear toxin. Before he loses his mind completely, Batman asks Crane who exactly he's working for, and he lets Batman know that it's Ra's al Ghul, which is really inconvenient because Batman was pretty sure that Ra's al Ghul died three months ago. Batman needs to save Rachel, but unfortunately Arkham Asylum is being descended upon by every cop in Gotham. So he does the smartest thing and sets off sonar, calling all the bats in the city of Gotham to attack the cops. Now every cop in Gotham will have rabies. Batman is fleeing from the cops in his tank, but unfortunately he can't get away from them. So he starts destroying buildings, jumping from building to building on his tank, destroying everything in his way, even destroying a bunch of cop cars. But Batman has one rule, he won't kill anyone. So those cops can rest easy knowing, even if they're paralyzed, at least he didn't murder them. Once Bruce gets Rachel back to Wayne Manor, he inoculates her and asks her to give the other shot to Gordon. Bruce can't do that himself though, he has to go inside, it's his birthday and he's throwing a party. And there he runs into Lucius and sends Lucius back to Wayne Enterprises. He needs to make as much of the antidote as possible cause things are about to go nuts. He reveals that the whole water supply in Gotham has been laced with this airborne drug and they're going to use that vaporizing gun to send it straight to the air. All of Gotham, especially the Narrows, is about to go crazy. An airborne disease driving everyone nuts? Now I've heard of everything. At his birthday party, Bruce is introduced to a man named Raz al Ghul and his assistant Ducard. Ducard reveals that he was actually the leader of the League of Shadows the whole time. It turns out that the League is behind Crane's desire to poison all the water and send the fear toxin into the air. In fact, it's all made out of that blue flower that Bruce had to get back in the first part of the film. He's also still pissed that Bruce burnt down their club and left him for dead, so he ends up burning down Bruce's Wayne Manor and leaves him for dead. The League releases every criminal that was locked into Arkham Asylum, and they're released right into the Narrows. You might as well release as many criminals and murderers as you can before you release the fear toxin. Alfred runs inside a burning down Wayne Manor. He assists Bruce in escaping the fire. It's time for Bruce to become Batman and actually save the day and he should probably give Alfred a raise. Ducard turns on the vaporizer and puts it on the train that runs right down the center of Gotham. Of course, the water line was built right below it, so it'll explode the water line as it goes, releasing fear toxin all the way down the heart of the city. This is probably the worst idea that Bruce's dad and Lucius ever had. The train starts moving towards the center of Gotham. Bruce ends up getting on the train and fights Ducard. The train may have already blown the water lines in places like Arkham Asylum and the Narrows, but soon enough it'll actually be affecting rich people too. Before the fight began, Bruce gave keys for the Batmobile to Gordon, and he wants Gordon to knock down the line for the train so it doesn't actually make it to Wayne Enterprises and explode the entire water system for the city. Gordon has two gloves, stopping crime and actually blowing up city infrastructure, and luckily today they align up perfectly. Gordon destroys the train track, and Batman pieces out, leaving Ducard to crash and die on his own. In one fell swoop, Batman was able to kill his former master and destroy his father's life's work. Rachel tells Bruce that she loves him, but the old version of him, not the new version that has to be Batman. She knows that he has to be Batman until crime has been stopped in Gotham. Or at least until he stops beating up the mentally unwell. Batman is called by Lieutenant Gordon. They've done a good job and he's been promoted. But unfortunately, there's a new criminal that they have to go after. There's a new guy dressing like a clown and robbing banks and shooting people. And he leaves this calling card wherever he does crime. Who is this guy? What does he think he is? Some sort of joker? But for now though, Gotham has a new savior, a new hero. But this is just how Batman begins. And now I have seen it so you don't have to. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.